Welcome to the Green Garden Guys Green Energy Show Volume 2 Chevy Bolt. Yes, sir, right here. I love my Chevy Bolt. There are a few options uh, in the U.S. today if you're interested in buying a fully electric car. Tesla is a cult favorite. Okay, so Tesla was definitely leading the market into this. Um, Nissan produces a Leaf. Um, there is a Leaf Plus, which has a fairly decent range. Uh, then there's the Bolt here. There are a bunch of others uh, out there. There's some Kias and different vehicles that are full electrics. But they have very short ranges. We're talking ranges only like 110 miles or so. Um, the Bolt and the Tesla are fairly comparable as far as that's concerned. They'll do, uh, say, 260 to 280 miles or so on a charge. Um, it varies depending on how you drive. Okay, there's a lot of variations in all this. But um, under most circumstances, I can go 250 miles with this thing without recharging it. Uh, a complete round trip from here to Kona on the other side of the island is 197 miles, which means I make it back home to my charger and can plug the car in with plenty of space in there. Uh, and so here in Hawaii, especially in Hawaii, the electric car is hot because we got nowhere to go. I can't go to Boston, you know, and uh, we have plenty of recharging stations around the islands. They're all mapped. And so I can plan my trips around recharging stations if need be. But pretty much anything I have to do here, I can come back home to charge the car. For the meantime, it is wild west around here because so many of these charging stations are actually free. At Target, I get two hours charging free. The Chevy dealer assured me I get free charging with them whenever I want it. Okay, so here we are inside the new Chevy Bolt. Make this thing run. That's all you need. It's a keyless ignition, and I'm, most of the new cars have that. There's nothing special about it. But I am still in the habit of taking this out of my pocket when I head for the car. And you don't want to do that, because if you take it out and lay it in the console or something, um, you could accidentally lock yourself out of the vehicle. Anyway, so to make the car work... And I want to get the air conditioning going because it's warm in here. Uh, first thing we do is we step on the brake pedal, number one. Number two, there's a little button right here on the dash. This guy right here. We press that thing, and everything starts getting active. You see everything lighting up around here. Ding, ding, ding. It's telling me I need to put on my seat belt and all the other warnings. The car is incredibly sophisticated. It has all sorts of different features about it, like the headlights turn themselves on automatically, the, the brights dim automatically, and on and on and on. Now, one of the things I like about the Chevrolet is we have a whole lot of buttons and stuff here on the steering wheel, sticks, levers, uh, basic knobs, and standard type analog devices to control a lot of things in the car. We also, though, have this screen over here and a touch screen here that controls things. Now with the Tesla for instance almost everything is controlled through that touch screen and um, I personally don't like that. I mean you know, I've been driving for 55 years or more uh, with analog knobs, buttons and stuff. My first car was a 1937 Pontiac with a manual choke and a stick shift. <laughs> All right, So um, you know I'm kinda old school. I like the buttons. I like to be able to touch these things um, but we do have redundancy. A lot of what's on analog type stuff is also in touchscreen stuff here too. So for those of you who love to use the touchscreen, uh, you're good. But I know with the Tesla, my sister-in-law could not even open up the glove compartment because the glove compartment is computer operated too. Um, well, I got the air conditioning running. It's cooling off in here and it's time to to head on down the highway. I have my uh, trip to the transfer station here this morning, so we're going to take you along with me. Um, now, this car has no transmission, right? <laughs> the motor is direct drive to the axles. If you want to go backwards, they reverse the current, is how this works. Now, there is uh, a you know, basic shift lever here that looks pretty typical. Um, it's got some buttons on the sides of it and stuff here. Uh, you 
it's right now we're in park park is done by pushing that button here is a button on the side you press that and then push it up this way almost like a stick shift um, and it goes into reverse and then we get uh, of course the standard um, dashboard thing over here okay so we got a backup screen all right we are moving um, backup screen might warn me that I'm gonna run over a squash here in a moment okay there we go and then to get it back into gear all we got to do is do that and we're ready to rock and roll now we have another L here below drive now, that really isn't low range what that is is it's a recharge range and you shift just by doing that again when you get it into that range, every time you let your foot off the pedal, the car is going to go ahead and start turning the motor into a generator and recharging the battery. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so... Ah, how's that? Quiet, huh? That looks clear. Okay, so right now I am in one pedal driving mode. That push down, car goes. Let off, car stops. And believe me, this car goes. Okay, exceeding the speed limit already. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quiet and it's really fast, very powerful. standard cruise control and all that sort of stuff um, when you put it in cruise control it does disable the uh, low range extremely powerful uh, quiet easy to operate you don't have to relearn how to drive in fact I am unlearning 50 years worth of driving because yeah, I learned to drive with stick shift, so I had two pedals on the floor for brakes and clutch, and then one for accelerator. We used manual chokes, and so I used to pull the choke out on the dashboard. Some of my stuff even had a throttle. I mean, we're talking old school. Um, everything was wires, cables, and rods. You know, there was no digital anything in those cars. This thing here, it takes care of turning the lights on and off for me. If somebody comes at me, it turns the brights off and then turns them back on when they're gone. Uh, it lets me know when I'm starting to get too close to the guy in front and get too close to the side of the lane. Of course, all that stuff is pretty typical these days. All right, we are now braking on the motor. was the motor breaking the car. Pretty neat, huh? And as we did that, it turned the motor to a generator and it pumped juice into the battery. going downhill and I am in regen range here that is we are recharging the battery using the motor and I 
I'm pulling four kilowatts as I'm rolling down this hill at uh, 56 miles an hour here. Um, I let off a little bit here. I'm pulling 20 kilowatts. Depends on how uh, how long the grade is. But it is possible to recharge this car um, if you go uphill to your destination, then turn around and come back downhill the same way. The car will often put as much juice back in the battery as it used. <laughs> just, just, I find quite remarkable. It's just ridiculous. It's almost like a perpetual motion machine. Not quite. It's not perfect. Uh, driving conditions that have to be absolutely identical. Usually there's traffic problems and so on and so forth. Um, but it comes close, I tell you. It's amazing. Uh, okay, now I am using the motor to brake the car. Now it takes a little timing, so there's South Kapua Road. I am letting off. All right, now I let off a little early, but that's what you want. I'm slowing down. A little turn signal here. There we go. Yep, and I got it just slow enough to make the corner by dragging it down on the motor. So it's not even necessary to use the brake pedal in this car. You have a one pedal driving. And it's actually the most desirable way to drive. You'll put the most current back in the battery that way. Ooh, she's a beautiful day out there on the ocean. Mm -hmm. Nice day. that it makes. Uh, Chevy put that in uh, below 14 miles an hour just to make sure that people can hear you if they're walking around the driveway or something. Um, it's not much of a noise but it is audible. You can hear it. Oh my god. Holy smoke. Oh man, somebody really roofed it in the rhubarb here. Doesn't look good. You gotta wonder, did they get out of that at all? Man, there's a lot of pieces of the car mess in here too, like the front wheel. The uh, Tesla Powerwall has hit 100% and we were exporting most of our uh, energy back to the grid. And so I just went ahead and plugged in the car, try to use up some of the excess energy. Um, so this is a perfect time here in Hawaii at least when the sun's out like this and the power wall's full, start putting the rest of the energy into the car from the roof. Um, Aloha. You get these cool plates too that say electric vehicle. Hang loose. Have a great garden season. Go solar. <laughs>